Good evening and welcome to Lord of Life Lutheran Church's Monday Thursday worship. If you have the bulletin which was sent in your email, um, put that up on your computer screen or on your phone so that you can follow along and participate as you would like, um, as best you can in this time of social distancing. This evening, our Lenten observance comes to an end, and we gather with Christians around the world to celebrate the three days of Jesus' death and resurrection. Tonight, we remember Christ's last meal and his disciples with his disciples. But the central focus is his commandment that we live out the promise embodied in this meal. As Jesus watched, washed his disciples' feet, so we are called to give and receive love in humble service to one another. Formed into a new body in Christ through this holy meal, we are transformed by the mercy we have received and carry into the world. Departing worship in solemn silence, we anticipate the coming days. We continue now with our call to worship. Thanks be to God to be our thanks be to our God who is merciful, merciful and gracious. Slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Praise to Christ who humbled himself and became obedient unto death. Even the death on the cross. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. A time we will take now for silence, for reflection and self-examination. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment to love one another as he loves us. Write this commandment in our hearts and give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Psalm 116 I love the Lord who has heard my voice and listened to my supplication. For the Lord has given ear to me whenever I call. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things God has done for me? I will lift the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. Precious, Precious in your sight, O Lord, is the, the death, death of, of your servants. servants. O Lord, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will, I will offer you the sacrifice. 
sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. A reading from 1 Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Our gospel this evening is from the Gospel of John, chapter 13. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon, Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but it is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you, for he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put his robe on, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of our Lord. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace. Rather than doing my traditional centering prayer, I want you just to take a couple of deep breaths. Breathe in deep, let ex exhale out, full, deep, calming breaths. And remember that everyone here that's joining us today for helping with the service and everyone around the world are also breathing full, deep breaths. It's part of what it means to be human, what it means to be alive, and what it means to be in the midst of whatever is happening to us on this day or on another. And for this evening that we've just heard about from Jesus and his disciples, it's an evening of celebration. 
And for them, it's just a great night. They have no idea what's happening. And so you have to think about that. And they don't actually understand what's happening until many, many days after Jesus' resurrection. So tonight is just a wonderful night of gathering together with friends, of celebrating the Passover together, which was always meant to be a, a festival that was spent at home, a meal spent at home with family. And all these people that Jesus has around him are family. And they're together to be together and to drink wine and to have a feast of lamb and to prepare the Passover feast. A couple of years ago, actually quite a few years ago, I was sitting at my home church which was then Amazing Grace Lutheran Church in Lawrenceville, Georgia, and the pastor at that time was Mark Orvick. And I was sitting as far back from the altar as I could get because I was in the choir and tenors were on the back row. So for whatever reason, I was there watching and observing and, and listening to the service. And as Mark was finalizing the communion and instituting the elements, and I think we were in the Lord's Prayer, um, I suddenly realized, as for whatever reason, that when Jesus and his disciples were for, together at this evening, that it was an evening of joy, and that Jesus was doing this in absolute joy and love. And that it caught me off guard when I had this feeling and realized this, because we always take communion so seriously. We always take this evening of Monday, Thursday so seriously. Because of course, what happens when they go to garden, the Garden of Gethsemane, it all gets way too serious when Jesus is then captured and, and goes on into the, to um, death you know, on the cross. But this night is a night of intimacy, a night of love shared between brothers and sisters, because it's not just the disciples who are there, it's all the people that have been with them in this long journey coming here to Jerusalem. And so to think about that, that when Jesus is sharing, you know, his, when he breaks the bread and basically creates communion, he said, this is my body given for you. Imagine him looking at you with love and with joy and, and, and then as he takes the cup of wine and shares it with you and shares it with the disciples that he does this with love and joy and that as the evening goes on you can see and feel the disciples kind of understanding that this evening is something so much more than just a normal um, Passover festival and as Jesus radiates this energy of love um, you know, when that happens, when we have God moments, we, we, we process it, but we're not always clear of what it all means. And so they're taking this in. They're, they're kind of in wonder as this is happening to them, but they don't quite know how to define it or how to talk about it or how to even know what it's all about. And of course, they won't know until finally, days after Jesus' resurrection, they will go, oh, we're supposed to do this. Also, another thing that I found is, is, even though it's hard when we read the Gospel of John, it's a very intimate moment between Jesus and Peter. You know, he's taken off his robe during the, the meal. He's kneeling down and washing their feet. And that same kind of thing is happening, that he is touching them and they are feeling his touch and the warmth and the water and the grace and the love. And he gets to Peter, and now, if you know Peter in the Gospels, Peter and Jesus are always having this kind of, Peter kind of assumes he knows what the answer is, and usually he gets it wrong because he kind of stands in for all of the disciples. He's one of us, we always get it wrong. I know, I know, you know, I know the answer. And so if you see and hear when Jesus and is trying to wash Peter's heart, feet, his heart, he, his heart is already clean, sorry about that. But he's washing his feet. He says, no, 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 you will not wash my feet. And Jesus says, okay, we're going to do this again. And so, no, you don't, what, you don't know what you're not, not letting me do. You, you've got to let me do this. And, and then he says, okay. 
wash all of me, wash my head, my face, my body, everything. And then, of course, you can imagine Jesus rolling his eyes. Now, it's more serious in the Gospel of John, but these people have been with each other in ups and downs. They have been together in, in terrible times and wonderful times. They have been learning from Jesus how to share and be the presence of God with everyone they meet, because that's what Jesus has been teaching. So it's an evening of intimate celebration, an evening of grace, an evening of love, an evening that we're invited to ponder because soon everything will change and go the opposite way, which is also what life is all about with faith. Because God is with us in the good times and the wonderful times and the feast times and the drinking times and the, the singing times and God is with us when we are mourning in grief, when we are in deep pain, when we are suffering and sick. There is nothing that can stop the love of God from coming to us and that's what Jesus teaches us, that God is always with us right here, right now. And then as we get to the end of the gospel, Jesus says, now the Son of Man has been glorified, which he's referring to himself. And glorified is a poor word, meaning, and that's, I don't know what the, the, the um, Greek word is, but English is translated as glorified, which basically means God's presence. So suddenly, if, if no one else has got it, now everybody gets that Jesus is just, he's glorified. He is, the presence of God is fully with him. And out of that presence, he then tells, gives us this last commandment. I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone knows that you will be that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. And so that's what we're here to listen to tonight. That's what we're here to ponder tonight. And this night of celebration that Jesus and his disciples are doing, it's real easy to, to celebrate and be and love one another and serve one another. But it gets more difficult, and we all know the difficulties that are coming tomorrow on Good Friday. So breathe. And as we breathe, we breathe in God's air. We breathe in the very air Jesus breathed, what he was among us. And we share and breathe the air that everyone throughout the whole world breathes. We breathe in and we breathe out and we are connected to every living being on this earth, every child of God on this earth. And in this wonderful celebration that we, Jesus has presented with us tonight, God is with us and God will be with us tomorrow and God will be with us all the way through Easter and beyond. Turning our hearts to God who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. At the end of each petition, I will pray, hear us, O God, and you respond with your mercy is great. God of love, unite your church in its commitment to humble service. Make us your faithful disciples. Speak words of truth and grace through us. Encourage us in self-giving acts of kindness. Let us love one another as you have loved us. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of love, tend to flocks, fields, and vineyards. Bring favorable weather for crops to grow. Guide the hands of those who cultivate farm and garden. <coughs> Let the earth flourish so that all may eat and be satisfied. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. 
God of love, you give us a new commandment to have love for one another. We give thanks for organizations that respond to disasters and for agencies that offer relief and humanitarian aid to populations in need. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of love, give ear to all who call upon you for any need of body or spirit. We especially pray this evening for all those infected by the COVID-19 virus, for all those who are isolated and alone because of this terrible disease, and for all those who suffer even more greatly because of the isolation that is now happening. Provide for those who do not have enough to eat, those who are unemployed or under, un, underemployed, and those who rely on the generosity of others. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of love, you invite us to your table of mercy. Heal all divisions between members of this assembly. Extend the hospitality of this table beyond these walls, that your love and welcome be made known to all. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of love, glorify your servants who walked by faith in this life and who now feast with you. Inspire us by the sacrifice of those who were imprisoned, persecuted, or martyred for their faith. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. According to your steadfast love, O God, hear these and all our prayers as we commend them to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. At this time, at this, this conclusion of our Monday Thursday celebration, we prepare for Good Friday by stripping the altar of all its decorations. Mm -hmm. 